Magandang umaga po sa bawat isa. Welcome po to another live stream of Christ to the Orient Missions. Kami po ay nagagalak na naririto po kayo with us and we can share the gospel and, and learn the, the word of God and the message of God today. Let's open our Bibles to Acts chapter 1 verses 4 to 5. And there's something very peculiar po na gusto po natin pag-aralan today and gusto ko pong punahin natin dito sa mga verses na to. Let me read with you. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait. At ulitin ko po, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for everybody that's in this live stream. Salamat, Panginoon, that even uh, kami po ay still nasa quarantine, Lord God, you allow us to make ways to share your gospel, learn of your message, and just begin to love you intimately, Lord God, through our meager means, Lord. We thank you, Father, na kami po ay pinapayagan mo, Lord, na, na magsalo-salo, albeit online, Lord God, and you are here with us in your, in your presence, in your love, in your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alam niyo po, patuloy po tayong nasa quarantine and alam niyo, it's whether we like it or not, kailangan po natin tanggapin ang fact na medyo matatagalan pa po tayo sa ganitong sitwasyon. I know that we're, um, namimiss po natin gumala, namimiss po natin pumunta sa mall, maging malaya, wala tayong, uh, nang walang face shield, walang face mask. But nevertheless, this is part of God's seasons for each and every one of us. Tama po, narinig, you heard me right. This still is a part ng season po ng Panginoon wherein He expects us to, to be faithful, to steward this properly, and most of all, to worship Him and take care of each other. Katulad po nung sa Acts chapter 1, verse 4 to 5, verses 4 to 5, si Jesus po is nagpiprepare na po, tapos na po ang ating crucifixion dito. Tapos na po ang resurrection. Now, Jesus is preparing for ascension. Okay? But while he was giving his final instructions sa kanyang mga disciples, there was something very peculiar or something very uh, hindi, uh, hindi normal or something na hindi natin usually napapansin that he said to the disciples. At yan po yung makikita nyo sa verse 4. And Jesus said, wait, sabi, niya, he, sabi ni Luke dito, he ordered them not to depart to Jerusalem but to wait for the gift or the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. And, and what I want to point out po dito sa mga verses na to is the one he said, wait. Sabihin nyo, kung may katabi kayo ngayon, habang nanonood kayo on the screen, sabihin mo, wait, wait, wait. It's very important for us to wait. It's a value na hindi po natin nakasanayan. Gusto po kasi talaga natin, alam nyo, ura-urada, mabilis pa sa alas 4. Or, meron naman po mga tao na, Teka lang, o ningas kugon, o manyana habit. Ito po ay hindi po the same as waiting na katulad po na sinasabi ni Jesus. Waiting is something that is, is, that is very unfamiliar po sa atin, especially po ngayon. If you want a title po sa aking message for today, the title is Wait, There's More. Kung kayo po ay laking uh, TV shopping at laki po kayo sa mga uh, home gallery o kaya sa mga uh, QVC, eh, lagi nyo po maririnig yan at every time na may ino-offer silang product, i-build up nila yung product na yon at makikita mo, sobrang convinced ka nang bumili. Pero meron silang punchline doon at uh, kung, kung kayo po ay uh, coming from the previous or the same generation as I did, Alam na alam nyo yung mga katagang, wait, there's more. Diba? At yan po, when, when, pag, alam mo, pag sinabi nila yan, there's so, na may, may dadagdag pa sila, either na, wait, there's more. If you order now, meron kang discount. If you order now, dadagdagan namin yung mga items mo. If you order now, bibigyan ka namin ng premium. So in short, alam nyo po, in, in that fact, we now know that when we wait, there's something more that can be added into the value na, mer- pina- na ine-enjoy natin. Friends, for your information today, one, one of the most common words that can describe our generation and our season today is immediacy. Immediacy. When we say immediacy, it's, it's, it's so much fast-paced. Alam niyo po, pag dati nakaalala ko nun, pag nag-bank transfer ka, 
uh, meron kang 3 to 7 days clearing sa mga bangko. O kaya pag uh, meron kang cheque, meron pang clearing time yan. Or pag uh, ikaw ay uh, uh, merong order, talaga mag-aantay ka. Pag ikaw ay pupunta from, from Luzon to Mindanao, uh, by boat, maghihintay ka ng ilang araw. But today, that's not the case. You know? Meron na po tayong immediacy. When you say immediacy, ibig sabihin, on point lahat, laging nandyan na agad. Pagka in-order mo online, dapat bukas, hindi dito na yan. Meron tayong same-day delivery. Ang ating connection sa mga mahal natin sa buhay, dati nagsusulat ka, tapapadala mo sa post, tapos hihintayin mo yung reply nila. Ngayon, hindi na. Naiinip ka na pag tumagal ng dalawang oras. Bakit ngayon ka lang nag-reply? Our generation and our season is so fast-paced na wala na tayong napaka-minimal ng value of waiting para sa ating buhay. But through waiting, ang dami po na-activate ng mga bagay sa buhay ng mga apostol. Let me tell you some, some examples, okay? When they waited, sabi ni Jesus, you have to wait for the Holy Spirit to come to you. Because that's the promise of the Father. Wag muna kayong aalis ng Jerusalem. Wag muna kayong kikilos. Wag muna kayong gagawa. This is something a bit different mula po sa naririnig nating go and make disciples into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey. Yan po ay something na hindi po natin mailagay dun sa context na yun. Pagka sinabi pong masigasig tayo, marugdob tayo, we're passionate. We're on fire. Ang hirap po ising it yung context of waiting sa ganong classing concept. So friends, we're going to talk about waiting in this season today. Wait, there's more. Okay? That is a value na hindi natin natutunan. That is a value that we don't put premium upon it, but God puts premium instead. Pinahahalagahan ni Lord yan. What, what happened when the disciples waited? Sabi ni Jesus, as I go, stay in Jerusalem, wait for a bit for you to receive the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. And yung context na yun po, waiting was tantamount for them being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And when they did, so, you know, spoiler alert, they did wait, yung mga disciples po began to act unnaturally from sa kanilang mga values. Si Peter, who denied Jesus, who's impulsive, waited and started being something else. Full of the Holy Spirit, nagkaroon ng boldness si Peter to preach in the day of the Pentecost. Full of the Holy Spirit, nung ang mga apostles, nung ginulpi sila, nung council ng Sanhedrin, they considered it joy to be worthy to suffer in the name of Jesus Christ. Full of the Holy Spirit, si Stephen, he preached, he rebuked, and interceded para sa mga taong who stoned him to death. And full of the Holy Spirit, this community of witnesses was able to propagate and build the kingdom of God according to the instructions na binigay sa nila ni Jesus. I'm not saying na ito'y effort nila, ito ay cost ng Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit that they receive was something that they received because they waited. Because they waited. Do you see where I'm going with this? For today's message, friends, if there's something that there's a promise that you're trying to pursue, there's a purpose, a destiny that you're trying to run after, or kaya, uh, uh, just, just a breakthrough, a revival. Oh, Lord, we're just praying for revival right now in Jesus' name. If you're praying for revival for your family, a breakthrough for sickness, a breakthrough for your finances, then wait. 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 Because God desires timing. God is a God of time. Not your time, not my time, but His time. You know, the Bible uses, you know, generally two Two original words, I mean Greek words for time. The first is chronos, 
The second is Kairos. Kronos and Kairos. The difference between those two po is, is, is Kronos is yung sequence ng events. Parang um, if you've gone to school, lagyan makikita nyo sa mga test paper, arrange in chronological order. So we arrange in chronological order. Now, you have to understand that when that happens, God will allow us to be processed in chronological order as well. Kung ikaw po ay nagwo-work out, alam niyo na um, I started trying to exercise recently. Kailangan pag ano yung sequence ng workout mo is very important. Hindi pwedeng uh, naka-focus ka lang sa isang muscle lang all throughout ng 20 minutes and then bug down ka na ng 20 minutes. No, kailangan ang, ang tawag nila doon incremental, ibig sabihin pataas ng pataas. Tinubukan ko mag-push up, and guess what? Nahi- mahirap. <laughs> so, I, I researched paano, paano, how to get in shape, how to maging fitness. Sabi na, start with wall push up, hanggang sa kaya mo na yung uh, slanted push up, hanggang sa, pwede ka na sa baba, half push up, hanggang sa magawa mo yung full push up. Ibig sabihin, it has to be uh, a sequence of event that leads you to the goal and to the purpose that God will bring you. And then that, that, that one moment, that very important moment, that, that one time, big time moment, we call that the Kairos moment. The Kairos moment. Now mind you, ang Kairos po is not, that's it, and then we're done. I told you, sana ang, ang message na lang ng, ng ating preaching ay wait, but hindi, ang message natin ay wait, there's more. When the Kairos moment comes, there's more. The Kairos moment is not the end of your waiting season. You know, all throughout ng inyong moment, all throughout ng moment mo where God is developing you, it's a sequence ng events. When the Kairos moment, that one time, big time moment comes, still, the Lord is still developing you. And it takes a lot of values and disciplines para ma-perfect natin itong mga bagay na to. You know, Paul talks about running the race, winning the prize, yan ay Kronos and Kairos. But, um, even, even the Bible talks about timing, uh, when, when there is time to reap, time to sow, unless there is time for everything, then everything is in vain. So friends, alam ko po that we are in the waiting season. Pinihintay natin kung ano ang next part ng ating buhay post-COVID-19. And some people say, paano kung meron tayong mas malala na pagdadaanan next year, then it's okay. That's still part of God's season. You know, being a mature Christian would allow you to always, um, to always associate those things, these sufferings, these challenges, to the season of the Lord, to the timing of God. Wherever you are right now, you, gusto mong mabigyan ng, ng, um, ng explanation o gusto mong bigyan ng meaning ang mga bagay na ito. I'm, I'm telling you, we can't. Ilang members na ang, ang nilibing ko. At every time natatanungin ako ng pamilya nila, Pastor Jed, why did this happen? I don't know. Ilang, ilang friends and ilang family members na comfort namin to trial times. Hindi ka pumasa sa exam mo. May nag-message sa akin recently, Pastor Jed, umiiyak ang anak ko. And all I can tell her is that may plano si Lord. That is true. Pero if you're the person na umiiyak, ang hirap tanggapin nun. Unless you can trust God for your time, for your season. When you believe that God is sovereign, when you believe that God means the best for you, you can trust Him and believe in Him that He will walk you through. Because unless we trust the Lord to give uh, to, to do what He thinks is best, alam niyo po, magpapanik po tayo and we're gonna try things on our own. We're gonna try to make sense of things na hindi naman talaga purpose ni Lord. 
Because you know, Lord, the Lord is very eccentric in means. He doesn't play by our standards. Hindi pwedeng kung ano yung, yung capacity natin o kung, kung ano yung, yung aptitude natin, hanggang dun lang si Lord. He doesn't do that. So, when the Lord is at work, what do we do? We wait. We wait. We trust Him. We allow Him to do what He wants to do. Ang, ang, ang mga testimonies ng mga apostles was great things that they did through the Holy Spirit. But could you imagine what would have happened if they did not wait? What, could you imagine if, if <clears throat> pag ni Jesus, sabi ni Jesus, Peter ha, tanda mo yung sinabi ko. Sabi ni Peter, yes Lord, sure, why not? <laughs> Mag- wait lang ba? Sure. Pag alis si Jesus, alright guys, here's what we're gonna do. I'm so excited. Ha? Binigay na ni Jesus sa atin yung go signal. And they did not wait for the Holy Spirit to come. You know, the, one of the reasons why they needed the Holy Spirit was that ang naghihintay sa kanila was, was a season of persecution, a season of suffering. A season kung saan the only thing that will make you survive <clears throat> is the raw and adulterated power of the Lord. The only thing that will make you survive is the inspiration and the truth that binibigay sa inyo ng Holy Spirit. And the key for the apostles to get that is to wait. Paano kung umalma sila? Lord, hindi naman yung sinabi mo, di ba? What happened to go ye into all the nations and make it disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father? And what happened to that, Lord? What happened to, you shall be my witnesses to Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, and I will be with you? Huh? What happened to that? All of a sudden, we're not allowed to, to get out of this place. But all of a sudden, Lord, naka-lockdown kami, naka-quarantine kami. What happened to whatever it is that you ask us to do? Whatever happened, Lord, to us working dun sa mga pinagagawa mo? But the problem with us is sometimes part of God's process is waiting. Waiting for the season. Merong pangako si Lord sa iyo, sooner or later he will fulfill that but not in your terms. Not sa timeline mo. Hindi sa mga gusto mong gawin. But rather he will allow you to experience how to store that. If you can store your time, you can store God's blessing. If you can store your time, you can store God's power. If, you're, if you can store your time, you can store God's grace. But first, we wait. Waiting allows things to mature. I'm telling you this. Waiting, waiting allows us to Think about things. To see things in, in a better way. To, to experience. To find a scene. I really believe that every time na mag missions kami, one of the greatest reward for me sa heart ko. Every time na pupunta kami sa tribo, not only because we meet the people, maminister na sila, but to see God's goodness through the journey. Yung, yung mga bundok, yung mga puno, even, even, even yung sites. You see here, the process is, creates the beauty of the journey. The season creates the process kung saan you really appreciate God's goodness when it comes. You ma blessing the Lord when it comes. You're dreaming of good things. You're dreaming of better things that the Lord can give you. But the best things that, that you can um, <clears throat> that can captivate you is in the journey. How the Lord redeems you, how the Lord saves you, how the Lord allows you to fail, and the Lord allows you to be developed. You know, time is key to better things. Time is key to better things. I know so. I say alam nyo. Um, there's a lot of things that I do in my daily life that requires time. One of the premium na, na commodities, I'm saying premium a lot, aren't I? Pero one of the premium commodities that meron ngayon is raw materials plus time. 
Alam nyo, if, if, if you're into barbecue, yung, hindi yung barbecue na tuhog-tuhog, eh? you know, yung Texas barbecue, yung uh, brisket na paborito namin, it takes 15 hours para lutuin yon. 15 hours. Chasagayin mo yun. One of the, yung parang mamahalin na butter na meron sa Europe, eh, chinature nila for, for so many hours. And then they salt it and then they let it rest para mag, mag mellow down yung salt. You see, here, the, the greatest, the greatest value, uh, value adder, <laughs> if, if that's a word, the greatest thing that adds value to things is time. Katulad ng diamond. Diamond is product with graphite and carbon and uh, more materials and pressure and time. Things make, uh, time make things beautiful. Sorry, let me reword that for a second. Things, uh, sorry, time make things beautiful. He makes things beautiful. Beautiful in His time. He makes all things beautiful in His time. See what I did there? See where we came from? You see all around you? You want added value sa buhay mo? God's time. You want added value sa journey mo? Sa Lord, time. God's time. You want added value sa relationship mo? God's time. You want added value sa destiny mo? God's time. You want it added value sa purpose mo? God's time. You add God's time and see what happens. You see the timing ng Panginoon and you begin to see wonders. You give the, the helm sa Panginoon. You give the steering wheel sa Panginoon. And you allow Him to take either the scenic route or the shortcut. It takes time. Alam niyo po, maraming naluloko ngayon. Maraming nabibiktima ng, ng mga modus operandi on things. And, and I've heard a, a, a motivational speaker say, you get scammed because you try to cut corners. If you're not willing to put in the hours, if you're not willing to put in the work, or if you're not uh, willing na, na tsagain, well, ang mangyayari dyan is either maloko ka or you fail. Because don't get me wrong, bigyan ko kayo ng disclaimer. Here's a fair warning. Waiting on God's time, proper waiting, includes being aware of God's timing and waiting on Him with constant engagements. There's a Filipino folklore na tinatawag natin ay si Juan Tamad. Si Juan Tamad ay gusto ng bayabas. Nakita niya, there's a, may bayabas doon. It's ripe for the picking. And doon lang, it's a low-hanging fruit. But instead of reaching up, ang ginawa niya, humiga siya, binuksan niya yung bibig niya, inintay niya malaglag yung bayabas. You know, people are like that. Because we're so into, uh, into our laziness. We are so into yung ating terms, yung ating condition, yung ating selfishness. We desire to just sit down and, and let things pass by. Or, masyado tayong naiinip, we hustle. Masyado tayong naiinip, nagmamadali tayo into our destiny. So, how can I convince you then? Stop being the guy or, or the person na inaapura lahat ng bagay. Tandaan nyo. If you want beautiful things in your life, then tap into God's timing. God's timing can bring things in your life that more than you can afford. God's timing can bring things in your life more than you can ever imagine. Meron kang sakit, time is of the essence, it's okay. God can make that story beautiful. Meron kang hinihintay na breakthrough and uh, ang tagal dumaday, it's okay. Because the more time invested on something that God worked on, the more beautiful and the more appreciative we can be. Friends, we need to wait. We need to allow the Lord to work. Let me, um, let me use somebody as an example. And this guy is a master, master of God's timing. Okay? The reason why I said he's a master of God's timing, he knows when God will move. He moves when God moves. <laughs> 
And he stops when God asks him to stop. My man, David. David, I, I, I love this guy. Alam nyo, if there's a, if there's a leader, if there's the leader uh, example or a leader icon for us, that's David. Both in kung paano siya ni-raise up ni Lord as a great leader, paano siya nagkasala, and paano siya na-redeem ni Lord. And all those things. It's, oh yes, magkakaiba tayo ng journey. We can never be like David. But you know, we can always replicate the relationship and the engagement that David had with the Lord. And what added so much value kay David were two things. What added so much value dun sa journey ni David were two things. Number one is time and honor. Time and honor. So we're going to talk about time. Let's, let's leave honor for a different kind of message. Okay? But we'll talk, about, we'll, we'll talk about time. We'll talk about four things to do while waiting. Four things to do while waiting. While waiting, David was anointed as king way before he slayed Goliath. But his waiting season was full of fruitful efforts. Number one, while waiting, David invested in worthwhile skills. David invested in worthwhile skills. Remember po, nung time na si David ay inanoint, he was literally, was scrawny. And then, nung time po na pinatay niya si Goliath, he fought Goliath, he was around 12, 13 years old, more or less. And in between that time, makikita niyo po that he was practicing Two instruments. Number one, he was practicing his instrument of worship, his harp. He was practicing singing to the trees, singing to the sheep. Ang congregation niya, mga tupa. Okay? And then, he was practicing also the second instrument, his slingshot. Okay? So, dalawang, dalawang W to. He was bo- both a worshiper and a warrior. Ang kanyang kalaban ay yung bear, ay yung kanyang kalaban ay yung lion. What he protected were the sheep that he had. So, while you're waiting, even in this season, invest in worthwhile skills that God can use in your destiny, in your purpose. Of course, Pastor, eh paano kung hindi ko alam yung purpose ko at yung destiny ko? That's the thing. Okay? If you don't know what your purpose and your destiny is, of course, you're not gonna wait. Wala kang choice. Kahit na magantay ka, ang tawag sa'yo, tambay. Because you don't have a dream that you're pursuing. You don't have a purpose that you're investing on. You don't have a destiny that you're running after. So the first movement, the first reason for you to wait is for you to know that God is asking you to wait. I know dito sa season na to is a transition for us. It's a, it's, it's a season kung saan we're, we're going into the digital age. It's a season for us na nagta-transition tayo into different things. And habang nagka-quarantine, what do we do? Let's learn how to do things. Sita nyo, nat, 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 natututo tayo mag-set up for a live stream. Pinagaganda natin yung setup natin more and more. We're investing on things. Bumibili tayo ng ilaw, bumibili tayo ng better equipments. We bili tayo ng, ng better gadgets all so that we can, um, you know, use these things for the glory of God. So in short, pag nag-transition po ang simbahan after ng COVID-19, pag nag-transition ang ministry, we're ready. If, kung talagang we need to be competitively fighting for the souls of our brothers and sisters online, then let's do it. Kung ang, ang nagdi-disciple na sa mga anak natin ay TikTok at YouTube at Facebook, then let's fight for it. Huwag natin, huwag natin kamuhian itong mga mediums na to. But rather, let's turn these mediums into something God can use for His harvest. Let's allow ourselves to learn those skills so that when God gives us our destiny, pag andyan na yung breakthrough, we can steward those things. Amen? Kasi what if, alimbawa, kunwari, you're, 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 you're destined to be a doctor. And habang, habang nandito ka sa season na to, ah, I don't know kung matutuloy yung words namin or not, so might as well matulog na lang ako. Better yet, maglaro na lang ako ng, uh, uh, ng Brawl Stars or ng, uh, 
uh, what's, what's the game? Uh, ML o kaya uh, Call of Duty. Pagdating nung season mo na binigay sa ni Lord at doktor ka na, Dok, meron tayong kailangan operahan sa puso. Sige. Wait lang. Google ko muna. You know, everything, every season na bigay sa ni Lord, make it worthwhile for you to invest on skills that God can use so that when the, when, when the destiny and the purpose comes or the breakthrough comes, you can store that with your, with your skills. Amen? It's just like, ako, I remember the time tinanong ako, bakit ka pa, Sir Jen, magbo Bible school? I entered Bible school, pastor na ako. Had a, may, may congregation na kami. May, nag, nag, we, we, I was going into missions. And the question was, why did you go to Bible school? So, so, so that I can be better equipped. I know that God will give me a bigger ministry one day. I want to be equipped when that time comes. I was investing on skills. Pastor Jed, bakit ka nag-aaral how to do things on the computer? Paano mag-set up Because I know that God will, will make us mobile. Pag nasa missions na tayo, we need, things to, we need to do things. Now na nag improve to be honest with you, nag improve ang mga tribo. May mga kilala ko ngayon na mga na, na tribesmen na nag-aaral na ng computers and they're gonna be good at it. And we need to be stay relevant. So we need to invest on skills. This quarantine season, this waiting season, this season na hindi tayo nakalabas, this season na nakalockdown tayo, invest on skills that God can use so that way we can, so that He can use it. He can use you after your season of waiting. That's number one. Number two is that maintain a humble figure. Maintain a humble figure. While with his brothers, David never lorded his potential to them. His humility is from his honorable character. This honor will ultimately bear fruit in Jonathan honoring him, the people of Israel honoring him, his men honoring him, and ultimately the Lord honoring him. Maintain a humble figure. You know, you know one day na magiging lawyer ka, you know one day magiging engineer ka, you know one day na magiging doctor ka. But for you to stay equipped, for you to stay as a good, faithful steward, you have to maintain a humble figure sa buhay mo. You do not lord over it, over the people. Ngayon time ng quarantine, ang hirap-hirap, nakasama mong pamilya mo, araw-araw, nagbabanggaan kayo, you're, each, you're on each and everyone's face. But it takes a true Christian, true believers, hopefully like you and me, to maintain humility so that we can give honor to those people. You see here, si David. Si David, he knows that he's the king of Israel. Bata pa lang siya, he was anointed. You know what happens when children are anointed that way? Either you mayabang yan or they stay humble. And that's David. David stayed humble. Nauutusan pa rin siya ng tatay niya. <laughs> Nauutusan pa rin siya to go to the, uh, to the, to the wa- to war para magdala ng, ng tinapay sa kanang keso. Napapagalitan pa rin siya ng mga kuya niya. So David was a very honorable man. <clears throat> what God's anointing did to him was not boosted his ego, but allowed, to, but, but allowed him to boost his heart of integrity. So what happened? So while he was humble, he was honorable, anong ginawa niya? In honor niya si ang kanyang tatay as a father, in honor niya yung mga brothers niya as elder to him, in honor niya si Lord. So what happened? Nung si Lord was giving him, was raising him up into his chronos destiny, you know, Jonathan honored him. The people of Israel honored him. And the Lord even honored him. Binigyan siya ng Lord ng great encouragement and, and engagements. Because he maintained humble. Let me ask you this. Are, are you at home with your family and, and hindi kayo magkasundo? There must be something with your waiting season. No? You know, one of the things that is very important for me is for you to love and minister to your family. I mean, I'm not perfect. As a matter of fact, I'm, even if my magre-react yung family ko sa comment section, then I would be humbled enough. If ko ako i-rebuke nila ako online, please don't. <laughs> but PM na lang, PM is key, okay? But, you know, for me, family takes precedence over everything else. It's first and foremost. If I'm not a pastor to my family, then I'm not a pastor to anybody. That's, 
the humility na dapat na na meron tayo in our hearts. Hindi ko pwedeng sabihin sa kapatid ko na oh, shut up, makinig ka sa akin kasi ako yung pastor dito. Serve me kasi ako yung pastor. That's not how it works. While waiting and the Lord is brewing things and, 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 and destinies in your heart and in your mind, be humble. Because the more you become humble, the more that honor can definitely overflow in your heart. And ultimately, when honor is given, honor is received. When honor is given, honor is received. Number three, learn to strengthen others. While you wait, learn to be an encourager. While David was waiting, he ministered to Saul. He ministered to the guy that he was supposed to replace. He ministered to the person who's trying to persecute him and was very insecure from, with him. And Sabi ni Saul, you're gonna take away my kingdom from me. And David never fought back. As a matter of fact, the Bible accounts na hindi, pinapatay ni, hindi pinatay ni David si Saul even if he had a chance because he, he honored him. But nevertheless, he ministered to Saul. He served Saul. While in waiting, strengthen others. Be an encouragement. You know, hindi lang ikaw ang nahihirapan on a season of waiting, in a season of trial. Everybody needs to be encouraged, not just you. And, and for you who's listening right now, who say, oh nga, dapat ini-encourage nga niya ako. That's not true, okay? Don't think about other people encouraging you. Be the starter. Be where it comes from. Be the encourager of your family. Be the encourager of your relationship. Why? Because waiting is tiring, to be honest with you. I know. I'm still waiting for things to happen in my life. And I trust in the Lord. And I believe in Him. But ang problema dyan, if kung sosolohin ko lang to, then what's the point of your waiting? What's the point of being alone? God never made you to be alone. We're supposed to be a community. We're supposed to be a family of witnesses. We're supposed to be a kingdom. A kingdom encourages each other, helps each other, takes care of one another. Takes care of one another. So while you're waiting, strengthen others. Strengthen people. Be like David. You know, every time na torments his soul, ng, ng evil spirit, he's ready with a harp. He's worshiping with the Lord. He's ministering to Saul. Minister to your enemies, friends. Minister to people you don't like. Minister to the people who needs them the most. Tignan mo kung ano yung mga luxuries ng buhay mo. Tignan mo kung saan ka in-strengthen ng Lord and begin to share it selflessly. Be a sacrifice. Be a shepherd. Be a steward. Strengthen others. Help them. At your expense. You know why? Because that's Christ-like. That's Christ-like. Lastly, while waiting, keep engaging God. Keep engaging God. Since you have all the time in the world, since you have time para mag, magbabad sa Facebook, since you have time para mag-stream sa Netflix, since you have time para magalit, since you have time para mag sa gobyerno, then pull back those times and engage the Lord. Lord, here's the thing. I need a bit of confrontation right now. Kailangan ko ng kaaway. <laughs> now, either mag-discuss tayo, Lord, or you take away this frustration that I'm feeling. Lord, I'm discouraged. I don't know what to do. I need revelation. So engage me, Lord. Engaging God is the best thing that you can ever do. You know why? Because while you wait, without guidance, then you'll be lost. Being lost is difficult. Being lost is, is just oblivion. Para kang nasa isang room and, and you don't know kung nasa yung mga pader. Hindi mo alam kung nasa yung pinto. And even if you wait, light's not gonna come. You have to engage that voice, that, that heart, that conviction, that, that, that um, a comfort. 
Whenever the Lord is speaking, listen. Whatever the Lord is teaching, learn. Whatever the Lord is asking, do. When we keep on engaging God, it's like you're a plane on a runway. Nakikita mo yung lights. Nakikita mo not only kung saan ka lalapag, saan lalapag yung paa mo, pero saan ka susunod. Para ka nagda-drive in the night and may mga arrows yung nasubukan nyo na umakit sa bundok at on the zigzag may makikita yung mga arrows na tinatamaan ng ilaw nyo, reflectorize. That's, how you, what, that's what happens when you engage God. You know where to go next. You know what to do next. Even in waiting, yes, you will know kung ano yung, yung pinaprocess sa'yo ni Lord. You will know kung ano yung pinaaantay sa'yo ni Lord. And when, when His blessings come, His wonders come, His revelations come, you know that's God. You know that's Him. So we keep on engaging God. That's the true success of waiting season. The true success of waiting season is not being unmovable. The true success of waiting season is following what God is, where God is leading you. It's being in the place where God has asked you. Lord, uh, sige, I'll, I'll just wait here. I know you asked me to wait here, but is is mas malamig dito, Lord. I mean, malapit lang naman. The moment na dumating ka. I'm going to be right there. Okay? That's not how it works. See? See, I'm, I don't know. I'm still on frame. Okay? But I'm definitely not where I'm supposed to be. There. Engage the Lord. So you can be exactly where God wants you to be, when He wants you to be, and how He wants you to be. You got to hear Listen, how do you engage the Lord? Pastor, how do I engage my Lord? Number one, listen to your pastor. This season po, nasasanay tayo na hindi tayo pumupunta sa church. So make every effort to join the live stream, to engage your pastor. Message mo siya. We're willing. Message niyo po ko ng prayer request niyo. Kung meron po kayong hinanakit, kung if you need advices, then call me. We're available for you. That's the first thing. Engage your pastor. Number two, read God's Word. Always, attend the Bible study. Still invest in your personal discipleship. Huwag kayong masatisfy na kayo yung nagdi-disciple. Okay? Anong papakain nyo kung hindi kayo kumakain? At, at still, you can only give what you have. You cannot give what you don't have. So, fall in love with God's Word. Fall in love with God's people. Fall in love with God's work. See how the Lord is working through people's lives. I know the news is depressing, but we still listen to it. Why? Because we want to know what's happening and what God can do in the season right now. Understand this. When you keep on engaging God, He will keep on engaging you. And the waiting season will not be boring, will not be plain, but it will be full of surprises, full of wonders, full of challenges, full of growth, full of development, full of miracles. That's how we engage God. Let me conclude with this. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, it says there, But they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I know some of you life burst up. They shall mount up like wings of eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faith. See here, waiting upon God is the key to renewing your strength. Like I said, everything is about God's timing. Everything is about God's timing. If you want better choices sa buhay mo, if you want a better relationship, if you want uh, a better work, if you want a better uh, a life, a better life, then it's all about God's timing. Find where God is working and work with God there, provided that you're the right person for the right job. If you wait on God, not only will you fulfill your purpose and your destiny, but He will add value. That's the term, wait, there's more. Because when you wait, there's going to be more. You wait on God, 
more value to your relationships. You wait on God, more value for your work. You wait on God, more value for your family. You wait on God, there's going to be more value in your ministry. Wait, there's more. Whatever you do right now, make sure that you wait with whatever God is promising you, with whatever God is working in your life, whatever God is working in your relationship, whatever God is working in your jobs, in your finances, in your health. Waiting upon God is the key for added value life. Romans chapter 8, verse 25. It says here, let me paraphrase it. If we believe in hope, then we patiently wait for it. If we believe in hope, then patiently wait for it. That's Romans chapter 8, verse 25. Three verses after. It says, therefore, we know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and who is called by His purpose. If you want good things to happen to you, then patiently wait for hope. God bless you today. Let me pray for you. Lord, we thank you that even in a season of waiting, even in the season, Lord, of quarantine, the season of lockdown, we know, Lord God, that we have hope in you. We want to believe, Lord, that this hope, Lord, is not in vain. But, ra but rather, Lord God, we want to engage her heart, engage her season, engage her timing in everything, Lord, that you want us to do. I pray, Lord God, that you lead us and you guide us, Lord. Father, let every person in this place, I pray that they would desire a value-added life according to your timing, according to your uh, season, according to your processes. And right now, Lord, we believe that you're a good God, a God that works with us, a God that gives everything that he has for us so we can trust you and we will do our best to steward our season, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Thanks for being here with us. God bless you. Stay safe.